What's going on guys? So I typically shy away from telling people exactly what I use, but here are literally the instruments or plugins I use over and over on tracks. So number one is for Rhodes or electric piano sounds, I use Vibrant from Steinberg. In my opinion, it's the most expressive, easiest to navigate UI, largest and most useful instrument selection for electric pianos around. And there's a Rhodes suitcase, a Rhodes Stage Mark II, Wurlitzer 200A, and Honer Clavinet. It is made for Halion, but you can use Halion and other DAWs, not just Cubase or Nuendo. So I think it's killer for keys. So number two for lo-fi or mix bus or drum bus or keys lo-fi-fication stuff, it's 100% aberrant DSP sketch cassette. I bought this a couple years back and I've used it like crazy. There's always something it can either enhance or dehance. I use it often on the mix bus when I want that kind of tape flavor. It does add body. It really helps blend bus tracks. Uh, but if you want flutter a warble or something lo-fi for some keys, Sketch Cassette does it. I think it does it better than anything in a way that remains actually useful in a track. Number three for drums, typically I'll use Steinberg's Backbone. I think it's very underhyped. It's got a lot of versatility and I can never not get a sound I can't use. It's a killer drum synthesizer and I like it more or less because it gives you the ability to layer sounds that don't phase cancel, like when layering samples elsewhere. I also use Groove Agent from Steinberg a lot. Typically, I just use the built-in sound packs that come with Cubase, mainly ease of use and uh, to go from session to session. So number four for synth sounds, I'm using SoftTube's Model 84. Outside of a real Prophet 5 or my Prophet 6, the Model 84 is everything you could ask for from a hardware emulation. I owned a Juno 106 for years, and while I don't have it anymore, Model 84 is a good substitute. Synth bass wise, in my opinion, if you wanna get the biggest synth emulation of box, it's the Model 72 from SoftTube as well. Personally, the default setup, it's like this kind of stereo, pitchy, like trying to be analog sounding like plug-in. Honestly, keep it in mono, that's what I do. So number five, what I use for bass is an actual electric bass, Fender Jaguar in my case, and a soft tube amp sim. But why I'm pointing this out is think of using an actual bass cab or an amp sim before using a synth bass. The reason I use a physical electric bass is because for me it's easier to get the expressions I want versus using a keyboard or key switching. Why not just play it the way I hear it in my head? Articulations are easier for me. It provides a sound that's easier to mix when you want to hear bass on smaller speakers since a real electric bass typically has more harmonics. Synth basses sometimes output such a pure tone that it can prove difficult to mix. So typically I just use an electric bass and when I'm producing it, I'll pare down the bass to get the sound I want rather than use a synth. Number six, uh, Sonable Smart EQ4. It's a serious time-saving plugin. It's not like it'll make your mixes better, but it will make mixing easier. The addition of Dynamic EQ makes Smart EQ4 the only EQ plugin you might need. Not if you need colored EQ. Look, you can just get it. It will make your mixes less offensive, if anything. For number seven, I use SoftTube's Empirical Labs Mic E Channel Strip plugin. So of all colored plugins, this is by far my favorite. I own the hardware and I've always loved it. I think next to a BAE 1073, this is the best channel strip around. In software, you've got the functionality that the hardware doesn't have, and it's a super smooth kind of compressor, but can be aggressive at the same time. You have fixed attack and release times, which makes it simpler and quicker to set up. It has a saturator. You can turn off the compressor. Personally, if you can't afford the real thing, give it a try. I think it's so good on color dynamics and saturation that you'll be blown away. Next, number eight, Electron's Analog Heat Mark II. I think 99% of the time I run my drum bus through the Heat Mark II. I know they make a Heat Plus FX version now, but I don't find that nearly as useful for purely getting drums to either blend or sound bigger or hit harder. Personally, I've never used the OG Heat Mark I, but might be the same. So you can probably find one used pretty cheap if you want it. I kind of think this is like a secret weapon if you use loops with hi-hats or snares that may seem harsher or harder to mix. Just throw this on the drum bus and it kind of fixes a lot of problems. With Electron's Overbridge, you get an awesome way to control it for automation purposes as well. And number nine, Swam Saxophones. Personally, by far, this is the best saxophone emulation around. I love the sound of sax and I often need it for that jazz vibe. 
um, or when I'm trying to make sound alikes. Now this plugin is not cheap by any means, but I think it's the best. The control within the plugin over performances and sound parameters is unmatched. And I struggle to find a good library for sax, but SWAM's modeling is, in my opinion, the best. So yeah, there's a list of all the stuff I actually use. Check out Spotify for my tracks, playlist them, follow me on the main channel, uh, IG and Twitter. See y'all next time.